Good morning and welcome everybody. Announcements? Okay. We're going to use the mic this morning so everybody out there can hear it and all you folks can hear it too. All right, so if you have announcements, if you any others, maybe you can follow up here and we'll save some time. Um, first of all, the next se uh, in September, we're going to start a new series called Be the Doers or Doers of the Church. We are doers, right? Doers of, doers the, of word. the Word. I'm sorry, doers of the Word. On the back table, you'll see all kinds of fancy colored paper. We would like you to either do your handprints or your footprints. And you can cut them out here, or you can just take the paper, take them home, and make sure they're back here by next week. And you can decorate them. Put your name on the back, and we're going to use those around the church to show our hands and feet and that we're working. And maybe it'll be fun if you decorate them to figure out whose feet and handprints those are. Also, with that series, we're going to re uh, put some Bibles in the... Um, cabinet up there. So if you have a family Bible or some favorite Bible, put your name on the back with a, or on it with a post-it note somehow. Put it in the library. We're going to put those out also starting September. So that's all that I have. Anybody else? Yeah. Tomorrow we're packing the food cupboard at 10 o'clock. Um, if you'd like to help, just meet me at St. Peter's Church. The Caruso clan should be there, but any help, extra hands are always welcome. And then on Tuesday, we'll be going to Butler Lernerville for the food distribution. If you want to go and help with that, uh, you have to be here at 9. We leave at 945 from the church, and we go up to Lernerville. Make sure you eat a good breakfast because you don't get done until after lunch. So. <laughs> and um, on Saturday is Garden Club. So we'll be here at 8.30, and then after that, if you'd like to pick up some trash, we're, we can meet at my house at 11 o'clock, and the Patty Nelson run will be in September, and we have always helped pick up the trash on the loop that we do the run. It's just a nice afternoon to walk, and we'll have pizza for lunch. So it only takes about an hour to walk around. So 8.30 at the church, and then 11 o'clock at my house. There's a lot to do. <laughs> Anybody else faster? Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to represent the blue kangaroo this morning. Um, we do the closet the first and third Fridays of the month. Our person that was doing the first Friday is not able to do it because she homeschools her children. So we will be looking for like a rotation of volunteers for the first Friday of the month. And then Candy, which was doing that day, is going to take an evening during the month. So if anybody wishes to volunteer, just email me or tell me after church. OK, thank you. It's from 9 to 1 the first Friday. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay, here's your thought for the week. Make someone smile today. Tell them how much they mean to you. You'll both feel good. Uh, let us prepare to worship God.
The peace of God be with you. I invite you to share your sign of God's peace. Peace. For those who are able, if you stand and join with us in love, the Lord your God. together to be a church that loves God. Jesus said, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. We honor God our love and grace. You may be seated. I invite our young people, our children, to come up and join with me. You can come on up if you want. All right. You can just have a seat up here with us. So today our scripture is about loving God. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind, with all your strength, so what does that mean for us, to love God? How do we do that each day in our lives? Hmm? Yeah, how do we show God's love? Prayer? Yeah, we pray to God. Are there other ways? We sing to God? Yeah, we sing praises to God. Yeah, we believe that God sent his son, Jesus, to die for our sins, so we love God by believing in God yeah. and believing in Jesus. Any other ways? I know, that happens. How about when we help others? We're showing God our love when we help others? Yeah. When we read the Bible, we show God love. When we're nice to people, we're showing God our love. So there's lots of things that we can do each and every day to show God love. Sometimes just saying, thank you, Jesus, is showing our love. So this week, I want you to think about each day. How, at the end of the day, how did I show God love today? And I bet you'll think of lots of ways that you showed God love in that day. All right, if you'll join me with prayer, if you'll repeat after me. Dear God, 
Thank you for loving me. Please help me to love you and love others with my whole heart. Amen. All right, Miss Amber is going to take you and you're going to play a matching game to learn more about what it means to love God. Yeah. yeah. For those who are able, if you'll stand and join with me in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Dear God, we ask your forgiveness for the times we show more love to others than to you. We let other things take priority over you. Forgive us when we are skeptical of your love's transforming power. We repent of all our sins and turn our hearts again to you. Amen. God loves us and forgives us. We are transformed by God's grace and love. You may be, oh, you may be seated. Let's pray. God, we come to you today in prayer because we love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, with all of our mind. There are times, God, we know that we don't always show it, but we do love you, and we are thankful for your love, knowing that you have first loved us. And we pray that each day we are mindful of your love, because as we look around, we see so much dissension and so much anger and hatred and violence around the world and in our country, in our communities and families. And we just pray that we might be that beacon of light around us to share your love, to show that there is a different way. We pray for those who have not known love in their lives, that you help others to reach out. We are thankful for the many ways that we can share your love, such as going to the Jubilee Kitchen and sharing from our abundance of what we have to share with them and so that they can be able to provide food for those who need it. We um, pray for all of those who are living with, in their own lives a food scarcity and we are thankful for each one who's able to go to bed at night knowing that there's food in their refrigerator or in their kitchen for the morning and for the next day. We pray for all of those who are in need. As we look around, we see the needs of the continued wild, wildfires and the, the loss of homes and communities and nature and what it also is causing to people's health. We pray for the, uh, those in the, way, in the areas of the oncoming hurricane and storms, um, those who have been experienced flooding this week for those in Afghanistan and the situation there, for our leaders around our country and around the world as they face difficult decisions, the continuing battle with COVID. Be with us, be with all of us. You know our own needs and we lift them up to you today. We pray for our students as they get ready to go back to to school and off to college and especially those who are off to college for the first time and or staying away from home and and the joys and the challenges that that presents for our teachers as they prepare for the school year and for Amber we lift up prayers that she would get the job in Butler we pray for those who are looking for jobs for we know there are plenty out there but finding the right match we pray for those who need healing, and those who are in hospitals, for those who are recovering, our loved ones in nursing care, and those in nursing care who have no one, or no one comes to visit. May they know your love this day. We give thanks for our Savior Jesus Christ and all that he has done for us 
for his continual love and forgiveness, his grace. We're thankful for his teachings and his example. And so we pray now as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. about what it means to be the church. Today our focus is be the church, love God. Well, that's what one lady wrote to her friend about one day, is about how she loved God. So I'm going to share just a portion of her letter. She said, the other day I went up to a local Christian bookstore and she saw this honk if you love Jesus bumper sticker. So she said she had just come from a really great choir performance and it was really inspirational, and then a really uh, meaningful prayer meeting. So she was just really excited, so she thought, I'm gonna buy this sticker and put it on my car. So she did. She bought the sticker, put it on her back bumper of her car, and she says, boy, am I glad that I did. She said, I had such an uplifting experience um, after I put that on my bumper. She said, I stopped at a red light at a busy intersection, and then I got lost in my thoughts of thinking about how good the Lord is. And so I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, I didn't notice that the light had changed, and, but she said, you know, it was a good thing that someone else loved Jesus, because if he hadn't honked, I would never have noticed. <laughs> so she said, then I found out that lots of people love Jesus, because they were honking. So she said, and then he said, as if they're honking, then before I got going, I heard somebody lean out his car window and said, well, for the love of God. And she thought, wow, that is so, so great. What, what an exuberant cheer he has for God. Because he started saying, go, go, go. And everybody started honking. And so she said, I just leaned out of my window and started waving and smiling at all of those loving people. She said, I even honked my horn a few times just to share the love. (laughs) To be the church, 
is to love God. I mean, of course we know that. We know it's what Jesus says is the first commandment. So let's read it once again. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. So the Bible tells us that we are to love God with our whole being. It's, an, it's easy to say, right? But it's harder to do. What does it really mean for us to live out love in, of God in our daily lives? How do others know, how do other peoples know um, that we love God? And how do we show love to them? You know, kids say the funniest things, as we all know. And so one time there was a question. Um, they asked kids, how can you tell two adults eating dinner at a restaurant are in love? Well, Bobby, age nine, says, just see if the man picks up the check. That's how you can tell if he's really in love. Sandra, age seven, said, see if the man has lipstick on his face. Christine, age nine, said, it's love if they order one of those desserts that are on fire, and they like to order those because that's just how it's like in their hearts, that their hearts are on fire. Bart, age nine, said, lovers will just be staring at each other and their food will get cold. Other people care more about the food. So how can others tell if people, if we are in love with God? Well, if we use those same um, answers, then we can say, well, just see if they, can, if they pick up the check. Or people in love with God will just be staring at God's creation and people while, they're, um, and while people stare at their, um, eat their food. Um, others who love God just stare at it while it gets cold. See if we have love on our face. We order desserts that are on fire because that's just like how our hearts are, on fire for God. So what does it look like when our hearts are on fire with love for God? Well, I thought we'd look for just a few minutes at Hebrews um, chapter 11. It actually is known as the faith chapter and not the love chapter. But I'm going to, um, where the word faith is, I'm going to change it with the word love and see how that sounds to you. Because he loved God, Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. He was warned about something he couldn't see and acted on what he was told. As a result, Noah became very intimate with God. By an act of loving God, Abraham and Sarah said yes to God's call to travel to an unknown place that would become their home. When they left, they had no idea where they were going. But by an act of loving God, he lived in the country, promised him, lived as a stranger, camping in tents. Isaac and Jacob did the same, living under the same promise. Because Moses' parents loved God, they kept him hidden until he was three months old. And they saw that he was a beautiful child and that they were not afraid to disobey the king's orders. Then after Moses grew up, his love for God made him refuse to be called Pharaoh's grandson. He chose to be mistreated with God's people instead of having the good time in the Pharaoh's house. Rahab had been a prostitute, but she loved God and she welcomed spies so she wasn't killed with the people who disobeyed. Because David loved God, he was willing to face a giant to save others, and he played the harp to give God praise. Because they loved Jesus with their whole being, 12 disciples and so many other followers gave their lives to share the love of Christ with the world. So what does it mean for us to be a church that loves God? I don't think that we have to build an ark like Noah. I'm not sure how successful we would be in this day and time, but we built some really good boats, so maybe we'd be really great. But I think that loving God does mean that we're willing to take some risk like Noah did and to be able to think outside the box like Noah did. Loving God is being like Abraham and Sarah and saying yes to go to unknown places 
and to make plans for unknown missions and things. Loving God is being like Moses and his mother and father by being willing to protect each other and stand up for each other. Loving God is welcoming those who are looking for a safe place to worship, like Rahab welcomed the spies and kept them safe. Loving God means having the courage, like David, to face the giants to, from the bullies around. To love God is to praise God and to share God's love with others. Because if God is in me and God is in you, then it seems like that God's love is in both of us and we just can't help but love each other then, right? And that's kind of what our last scripture, well, two last two scriptures remind us of. The first one is 1 John 7 and 8, and I'll begin with 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And the other scripture is from Deuteronomy 10, and I'll begin with verse 12. So now, Israel, what do you think God expects from you? Love God, serve God, your God, with everything you have in you. So to be the church is to love and serve God with everything that we have in us. That was Beth's desire. She was sitting at an airport terminal, waiting to board a plane with several other people who were waiting. Um, and of course, she didn't know those people around her. So she, as she was waiting, she just decided to pull out her Bible and just start reading it. And all of a sudden, she kind of felt like people were just staring at her. And um, so she looked up, but then she realized that they really weren't staring at her. They were staring beyond her. At, so she turned around and to see what everybody else was looking at. And when she did, she saw this flight attendant or a stewardess, or maybe it was one of the airport people who, trans, airport transport people. It, they were pushing a wheelchair. And in the wheelchair was this not very handsome, some would say ugly old man, sitting in this wheelchair. So, the man had long white hair, and it was all tangled up and such a mess. And his face was really, really wrinkled, and he, he didn't look friendly at all. It's not the kind of person that you would naturally be inclined to go up and talk to. But yet Beth felt drawn to the man and thought at first that God wanted her just to go over and talk to him and share God's, share God's love with him. And she was like, oh, God, please, not now. I'm not here not him. But no matter what she did, she thought of the man. So all of a sudden, she knew what God wanted her to do. So she realized she was supposed to brush this man's hair. So she went over and knelt at the old man, and she said, Sir, may I have the honor of brushing your hair? And he said, What? She said, Oh, God. Oh, great. He's hard of hearing. So again, she said a little louder. She said, Sir, May I have the honor of brushing your hair for you? And he answered, if you're going to talk to me, you're going to have to speak up because I'm, I'm almost deaf. So she yelled one more time and said, sir, may I please have the honor of brushing your hair for you? Now, by this time, everybody around in the airport rating area was looking and just staring at her to see what was, her response was going to be. The older man just kind of looked confused, and, she said, and he said, well, I guess if you really want to. Well, then she realized she didn't even have a brush. So she said, oh, I I'm sorry, I thought I would ask, but I realized I don't even have a brush. He said, look in the bag, in the back of my chair, there's a brush there. So she got the brush out and started brushing her hair. Fortunately, she had a little girl with long hair, so she had lots of experience brushing out tangles in hair. So she just knew how to do it that was really gentle. And she worked for the, you know, uh, quite a while there in the airport, just brushing his hair, trying to get all the tangles out. And she finally finished. And as she finished, she heard the old man crying. 
And she went and put her hands on his knees, kneeling in front of him. She looked into his eyes and she said, Sir, do you know Jesus or his love? And he said, Well, of course I know Jesus. He said, You see, my bride told me she couldn't marry me unless I knew Jesus. So she said, he said, Before I got married, um, Jesus came into my heart, and I've known and loved Jesus ever since. But he said, You know, I'm on my way home to go see that bride, my wife. She, he said, I've been in a hospital a long time and had to have a special surgery in a town far from my home. So my wife couldn't come with me because she was so frail herself. And he said, I was so worried about showing up with my hair all tangled and all a mess. And he said, I didn't want her to see me looking awful, but I couldn't brush my hair all myself. By this time, tears were rolling down his cheeks. And he thanked Beth over and over again for brushing his hair. He thanked her. And as she was boarding the plane, the flight attendant asked her, why did you do that? And Beth explained she did it because it was an opportunity to share her love of God. When we really know God, we can't help but love God because God is love. To be the church is to love God and to be a witness of God's love every opportunity that comes our way. Amen.
those who are able, stand and we'll join in our dedication of all of our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Jesus, accept our offerings of praise in gratitude and thanksgiving for your presence in our lives and the many blessings we enjoy. Bless these offerings to be used to heal the brokenness of our lives in this community and beyond. now go forth in the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and guided by the love of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Amen.